and welcome to another A1 McDonald how-to. My name is Quinn McCullough and today I will be showing you the different ways to test submersible motor control boxes. We will start by testing the overload. Push the overload reset button to make sure the contacts are closed. Depending on the model of control box there may or may not be overloads. Set your multimeter to the lowest setting. Note that your multimeter may have slightly different settings. Place one of the multimeter leads on each of the overload terminals. The multimeter reading should not be over one half of an ohm. After seeing this reading, we can confirm that this component is functioning correctly. We will now test the capacitor. Disconnect one lead from each capacitor prior to checking. Depending on the model of control box, there may be more than one capacitor. For purposes of this video, we have removed the capacitor from the control box but this is not necessary in most situations. Set your multimeter to resistance times 2K. Note that your multimeter might have slightly different settings. Place one of the multimeter leads to each of the capacitor pins. If you're using an analog multimeter, the pointer should swing towards zero, then drift back toward infinity. If you have a multimeter with the ability to check capacitance or a dedicated capacitance meter, set your meter or capacitance meter to the capacitor setting that fits your capacitor size, typically marked on the capacitor. Note that your meter may have slightly different settings. Place one of the leads to each of the capacitor pins. The display will show a reading in microfarads. Make sure this reading is within the range marked on the capacitor. After seeing all three of these readings, we can confirm that this component is functioning correctly. We will now test the relay coil. Disconnect a lead from terminal 5 on the relay. Terminal 5 in this case is specific to a certain AY McDonald control box. Refer to the wiring diagram for your control box to confirm which lead to remove in order to isolate the relay coil. For the purposes of this video, we have removed the relay from the control box, but this is not necessary in most situations. Set your multimeter to the resistance times 20,000 setting. Note that your multimeter might have slightly different settings. Place one of the multimeter leads on terminal 5 and the other multimeter lead on terminal 2. The multimeter should indicate between 4,500 and 7,000 ohms, depending on the model of control box. After seeing this reading, we can confirm that this component is functioning correctly. We will now test the relay contact. Disconnect the lead from Terminal 1. Terminal 1 in this case is specific to a certain AY McDonald control box. Refer to the wiring diagram for your control box to confirm which lead to remove in order to isolate the relay contact. For the purposes of this video, we have removed the relay from the control box, but this is not necessary in most situations. Set your multimeter to the lowest setting. Note that your multimeter might have slightly different settings. Place one of the multimeter leads on terminal 1 and the other multimeter lead on terminal 2. The multimeter should register no connection. After seeing this reading, we can confirm that this component is functioning correctly. We will now test the magnetic contactor. Disconnect one of the coil leads. In this case, we are using an AY McDonald control box and the coil leads are the middle two leads. Refer to the wiring diagram for your control box to confirm which lead to remove in order to isolate the magnetic contactor. Set your multimeter to the resistance times 2K setting. Note that your multimeter might have slightly different settings. For the purposes of this video, we have removed the contactor from the control box, but this is not necessary in most situations. Place one of the multimeter leads on one side of the coil and place the other lead on the other side of the coil. The multimeter should indicate between 1,000 and 1,400 ohms, depending on the model of control box. After seeing this reading, we can confirm that this component is functioning correctly. As an extra step, you can remove the contact cover and inspect the contacts. This visual check is looking for black or burned contacts. The last thing we will do is a ground test. Set your multimeter to the lowest setting. Note that your multimeter may have slightly different settings. Place one of the multimeter leads on a ground lug and touch the other multimeter leads to each individual component. The 
the multimeter should read no connection. Repeat this check for all other connections. After seeing this reading, we can confirm that this component is functioning correctly. Now you know how to test your submersible motor control box. Again, my name is Quinn McCullough, and thank you for watching this A.Y. McDonald how-to. Still have questions? Give us a call at 1-800-AY-CARES. Stay connected with us on YouTube, Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, and Twitter.